I just wanted to ask you, because I worked at Panasonic back in the day when you made your commercials. Mm. Friends with Ed Janda sat, right, Ed. sat that, that's, right across from him. That's, that's, we're there. I made those commercials because of Ed. It was just like, he liked our stuff an, an awful lot. We had done, uh, let me see, the two spots with... Uh, E-Man. E-Man spot with them. And I, at the same time, that was up in Canada. And then we were also taping spots for, God, what was it? It was Kenner. It was a, a game for Kenner, and it was a, you know, the kid was looking at a black and white cooking. It was dark side, white side, or light side, whatever the hell the other side of the force is. And um, we also shot the e rare uh, commercials. And so him and I hooked up on that set and chit chat and whatnot. And he's, he's been an integral part of my family for a while now. Like, he took the last photograph of my father and me like together me my mom and my dad he took it and my dad died like the next morning and stuff so yeah he's always been i, I it's a friend of mine i put him in everything you know you see him right. he was in clerks too and whatnot <laughs> he's in red state as well he's the guy that goes to <laughs> to fix uh john goodman's knee he's like get the fuck out of here we'll get a rifle that's that's ed jan so um he's a sweetheart i love him to death man those commercials are fun to do one day he was just like do you want to do a commercial where you're the commercial i was like what do you mean he's like you'd be the pitch man i was like oh my god i've always <laughs> dreamed of being crazy eddie that'd be amazing so he gave me that opportunity as, as well good dude yeah so is uh commercial something you'd want to get back into did you enjoy that i did i had a good time doing it every once in a while if you could do something fun it's easy it's easy to do i mean a lot of people make a living out of it and shit but um it's fun to jump into just because you get to exercise a different set of muscles. You know, you're trying to tell a story in a short form medium. I don't do that very often. I don't do anything very short. So trying that, trying to do a 30 second spot is about diligence. It's about trying to like exercise a different set of muscles or try to do something you're not normally known for doing. So it can be productive, but most times people just do it because they're quick, easy money and shit. Um, but whenever I did it, I always did it because I was like, ooh, I like this. Like a Star Wars commercial, a commercial for a Star Wars toy. I was like, oh, my God, you know how many of those I've watched in my lifetime? To now be on the other side of that, that's a cool thing. And uh, in the Panasonic thing, they were just like, they literally didn't have to pay me. The moment they were like, you're going to be on camera, I was like, I'm the guy? Fucking, you keep the check and shit. And I remember I laid on a bed, and they dropped DVDs on me. And it was yeah. like American Beauty. I was rubbing my tits and shit. It was awesome. <laughs> From your childhood. Is there one toy that you wish you never opened from the package? That I never took out of uh, the box. No, nah, there was no, I'm not one of those cats where I was like, fuck, I wish I saved it and sold it. I'm, I'm glad I took everything out and played with it. Um, there's definitely, well, there's one I wish I hadn't taken out of the package just because I wish I would have been like, take this back to the store and get the right fucking thing. Uh, my, I'd asked for the Bat Cave when I was a kid. I think it was either my fifth or seventh Christmas. And... I was talking about the Mego Bat Cave. You know, Mego did these dolls. They're about maybe 10 inches, 9, 10 inches tall, like this. Wore cloth clothing and shit. And Mego did a Bat Cave that was kind of like the Barbie Dream House for boys. It was about this tall. There's an elevator. You can go up and down from Wayne Manor to the Bat Cave and shit. And the commercial was really badass. So I was like, this is what I want. You know, can, I, can Santa bring me to Bat Cave and shit? And I did believe in Santa, I think, at that point. And this is the Christmas I may have stopped believing in Santa. <laughs> so I was like, can Santa bring me? And my mom's like, Santa, of course, will bring you to the Bat Cave. And Santa did bring me a Bat Cave, but it was this. It, it was, it, let me see. Can I see this thing? Yeah. It was a roughly, not even this big, lose this much from, from my hand up. It was kind of rectangular, and it was plastic, and it was a little thick like this. And you open it up, and it was this two-dimensional play environment that was the Bat Cave, <laughs> and the characters were little cutouts from paper that you stuck in these plastic <laughs> bags. Not the same. Not the yeah, fucking no. same at all. And I, I, I've always been impressed with myself. I mean, generally, I'm always impressed with myself, <laughs> but I was very impressed with myself at a young age. I didn't fucking be like, you guys are fucking retarded. How did you not get the right thing? I felt so bad for them. Like, I felt bad for my parents. Like, oh, my God. Like, so I put on the brave face. I was like, this is amazing. Thank you. And that made all the difference, man. Like, you know, because you don't want to grind your parents' gears on Christmas Day. I'm sure they're like, buddy, we can't afford the bad cave. You know, we're, um, father works for the fucking, yeah, post office. Yeah. Fuck this. But I, I was the one that I wish I hadn't opened because I would like to have that now. I remember the day I got it, I was like, what a disappointment. But now it's been so uh, mythologized in my imagination, like I'd kill to have that toy again. I wish I hadn't opened it. Now I would open it and be disappointed. How different is, is Jersey from L.A.? What, 
what's missing out there that you, you can only get here that you can't get out there on the Good West Good bagels, coast? hands down. There, you can't find a bagel worth of shit on, <laughs> on the West Coast, man. It's the water. It all comes down to the water out here is different than the water back east and, and that back west. And the good bagel companies truck water out. Like, you'll see, you'll go to a bagel place where, like, we use East Coast water. And the bagels taste more like an East Coast bagel. So that's, to me, I've lived there now for... 10 years and that's the only thing that i can honestly go like boy it sucks you know about it that and you know the constant fear of i hope we don't die in a fucking earthquake <laughs> but other than that it's kind of you know the weather's nice and people are people are generally nice now it's probably a false kind of nice and when you walk away they may say shit about you but i'll take that false nice up front you know if i'm just buying milk if you want to call me a fat ass after i leave by all means but while i make this transaction make me feel welcome and they're always like have a great day so I don't know. I even appreciate the fake nice out of the, out of Los Angeles, but I don't leave my house much. So honestly, if I could transport my house between coasts, I would. Uh, unfortunately, my wife wanted to be in Los Angeles. That's, I had to go where the pussy was. And that's where the pussy went. She's like, no, we're not going to be in New Jersey anymore. So off we went to Los Angeles. And I like it. It's nice. The weather's good and shit like that. But I don't really leave my house all that much. You know, I start bringing everything in, start doing the podcasting there. We do the radio station there. If I can figure out how to shoot hit somebody at my house, it'd be amazing. This <laughs> <laughs> in my office. You can see it with miniatures and puppets and shit. Luke Skywalker is the lead. 